Go tell the Spartans, stranger passing by, that here, obedient to their laws, we lie. This is probably the most famous warrior epitaph, epitaph period of all time, written by the poet Simonides in honor of the 300 Spartans and their allies of Thespiae and of the battle train who fell at Thermopylae. And, you know, today, if you go to Thermopylae, you can't see that stone. It was just a simple stone, but unfortunately, 2,500 years of sedimentation and erosion, the entire mountainside has come down. And in fact, the, the uh, coastline has moved like a mile and a half out into the Malian Gulf. So there is still a plaque at Thermopylae, but it's not the original one. It's not the original verses. But let's examine this. Let's talk about this epitaph for a second, because it's really interesting. Um, what to me, I've said this before, what made the Battle of Thermopylae so different from every other battle that we honor throughout history, Trafalgar, uh, Cannae, the Battle of the Bulge, Gettysburg, is that the 300 Spartans went into this battle knowing they were going to die. There was no hope that they were going to win or that something was going to save them. They knew they were going to die and they did it. So Simonides, writing this epitaph, he did it in a very Spartan way in the sense that he left out. Everything was left unsaid. If you consider what really happened there, it was kind of an, a really an amazing thing. He had, you know, this vast army invading Greece threatening to wipe out, you know, Western civilization in the cradle. These few guys stood and stand, made their stand. And, and uh, eventually, even though they were wiped out, the whole, the Greeks won in the end. But Simonides chose not to say any of that. It doesn't say anything. Like what he's left out, he left out the battle. He left out the enemy. He left out the outcome of the battle. He left out the stakes of the battle, that it was freedom, democracy, Western civilization. And he left out the feats that the warriors made. He even doesn't even name who they are. So I, I think this was deliberate. And here's my interpretation of that, of that epitaph. Go tell the Spartans, stranger passing by, that here, obedient to their laws, we lie. To me, the one part that Simonides, where you could say that he was praising the warriors who fell, is the phrase, obedient to their laws. And what did he mean by that? I think he meant their code of honor, their aspirations of, of valor and integrity. And that is what I think Simonides was trying to say, great as this battle was, great as the sacrifice was, what the Spartans did was bigger than that. In the face of their own death, in the face of their own fear, in the face of everything that they were gonna lose, their families, their country, everything, they did, they were obedient to their code of honor. They stayed true to their code of honor. Now, if you think about it, if we translate that into our world today, in many ways, the Spartans were luckier than we are. They had a code of honor that came down to them from their culture. It was taught to them. Every aspect of their culture reinforced it. Now, you and I today, here in this modern world where chaos is the norm, what laws are we going to be obedient to? What code of honor are we going to be obedient to? And the answer is, I think, that we have to decide ourselves. We, in our own hearts and in our own, with our own intellect, we have, to, we have to define what life is, what our role is, who we're going to be true to, what ideals are we going to be true to? Is it going to be something about our family, something about our country? something about our, our personal aspirations? And is it going to be to the greater community, to the environment? Is it going to be to the planet Earth? We have to decide that, you and I ourselves. And then it's our role, like these 300 Spartans and their allies, to be obedient to their laws. Mm -hmm.